Hey there, gang. Guess where I am at? I'm in Vermont. I flew into Burlington yesterday and I just got here. I just woke up this morning. I'm at a hotel in a little town called Stowe, S-T-O-W-E. And it's near the capital. And it's beautiful here. Everything looks like it's from the 1700s. It's got a little bit of rain, but I think we're gonna be okay today on our grand adventure. We are going to the grave, something I've been wanting to do for like a year since I started the channel, Dr. Timothy Clark Smith. Some of you may know, probably do know, the man with the, the window. And we're gonna, we're gonna take a look down that window, all of us together. So yeah, we're gonna stop at some small towns on the way and we're gonna see some sights and maybe a little bit of history. What do you think? Let's go. All right, we are in New Haven. Look at that old church, guys. Isn't that beautiful? We are getting close to the location of the Evergreen Cemetery where Dr. Timothy Clark Smith is buried in that very unique underground mausoleum with the glass window looking up. Vermont is very beautiful. A lot of mountains, small mountains and hills. It's absolutely breathtaking. A lot of small highways winding through the country. It seems like a lot of homes and some farms, a lot of farms actually in this area. It's breathtaking. Now we have the cemetery here on the left. Right here. Yep, that's it. Now well, we're going to have a look. Yeah, it's got the old sign. Look at that. And look at these old gravestones. Wow, this looks really cool, guys. Really cool. Okay, we are in. Let's do this. All right, we are here. We are here. Let us see. Let's go find a Let's go find the tomb. Now, I'm on the southeast side of the cemetery here, and there is a, like a little house. Caretaker house, I believe. And from here, we will walk to the front of the cemetery, which is in this direction. All the tombstones are facing that way, so I'm gonna kinda walk backwards. And then I will also tell you guys the story of Timothy Smith, Timothy Clark Smith. So he was a native here of New Haven. We're in New Haven. And it's funny when you read the article, the old articles, it said he had a curious career, the article of his obituary. He had a curious career. Well, he certainly did. He was a very interesting guy. He graduated from Middlebury College. He was in the class of 1842. He eventually obtained a position after he went through his schooling. I think he had started his practice, not his practice, he was starting to take medical school and then he took a couple of years of college business, I believe, and he was doing some business, but then he got into this position in the Treasury Department in Washington, D.C. for the U.S. government, of course, and that really, somehow or another, he ended up going to Russia after several years 
before he went to Russia, he did take even more study in medicine. He did graduate from the medical department of the University of the City of New York in 1855. Now, at that point in time, it was the Crimean War, was, the Crimean War is going on in Russia, and for some reason or another, he went with a bunch of other surgeons that he graduated with, classmates, and they were enlisted to act as surgeons, and I'm gonna take a guess that would be surgeons for the battlefield. So he was in the Russian army there for like two years, stationed in Odessa, and it is there when he married the daughter of an English surgeon. Her name was Catherine, Catherine Prout, and she had been in charge of the hospital actually in Odessa. After that was all over, they came back to America. Well, Timothy did first, I believe, with one of his sons. Her mother was very sick, so she had to stay there until, sadly, she passed away, the mother, and then she came with the rest of the kids. Now, they had seven children. Their names were Simon W., Harrison T., who, by the way, went, he later went mad. He was sent with his sister, Helen Louise, to an asylum. Actually, they were morphine, <laughs> they were morphine addicts, I guess, and in those days, they, what they would do is send you to the insane asylum. The other kids named Alfred Felix, Hermione, or Hermione, not sure the pronunciation of her name, but, and then Clara. We're just after the rain here. The rain has just moved through, literally, major storm. And now it is very quiet and you can just kind of feel the moisture and everything is really still. This is, this is really probably the perfect time to come here. The cemetery is spectacular. Look at these trees, holy cow. It is spectacular and as you get to the front, I can see, I'm gonna pan for you Look at those tombstones. They're crammed together and they're all very, very old. As we go through, hopefully we can find some from even the 1700s, who knows. Yeah, we're gonna go all the way up there because that's where Timothy and Catherine are buried. And you can see it when you come to the cemetery. Right when you drive in, it's right up front. Look at this over here, this is very interesting. So they, they lived a good life and he practiced and the family grew and prospered. When he was 71 years old, that is when he died. He was, I think he was 71 years and eight months old. It happened on a Saturday morning at a lodging house where he was staying. He had breakfast and he had walked out into the office area and he stood by a wood stove, I guess, and it is there where he was stricken with a massive heart attack. He was probably dead before he even hit the floor. Now it is said that he had this 
specter or horror of being buried alive, which many people did in those days. We've talked about this. The escape hatches, the bells, laying in the coffin with your finger on a string connected to a bell above to let people know that you're you're down there still alive. And of course, if you remember, we were we were at Dayton, Ohio, and I did that video at Calvary's, I think it was Calvary's Cemetery there on Anna Huckholt. And she was buried alive in her coffin. She scratched the coke inside the coffin was ripped apart because the kids were telling the parents, come on, come on, Exumer. I don't know if she's dead. Finally the parents gave in. You can go watch the episode, I'll put the link in. And they found her, pulled her hair out and fingernails, and can you imagine? And as I said in that video, I would rather be I would rather be eaten by sharks than buried alive. That's that. So you can understand its horror. You can just imagine. And a lot of people in those days. And why? Because the doctors and the and medicine, they really didn't know. You know, somebody's in a deep, deep coma, they're still alive, gang. What they would do is they would they take your pulse of course, and they would use, they put a mirror, a piece of glass under your nose, and if they didn't see a breath, they were like, you're dead. And they would bury them, they would bury them right away. Why? Because embalming, embalming didn't come along, well, listen, embalming started technically before the Egyptians in South America, and of course the Egyptians perfected it. But it wasn't really until post antebellum, like Civil War, that's when they really started doing embalming because the soldiers that were being killed, you know, they were, they were, they had to be sent home and they were far from home. So they kind of, that's when, but the people out here, rural, you know, late 1800s even, they weren't, they weren't doing it a ton. So the idea was to bury the body the next day, literally the next day. And that's why you had these things, these terrible things happen, where people are buried alive. Gosh, I can't imagine. And if I were Timothy, Dr. Timothy, I got to tell you, if I had any money, I would, I would, be do, I would do what he did. I don't think it's strange at all. Because that would be the worst, that would be the worst deal, let me tell you, in my opinion. Look at these, look at these tombstones. Wow, they're, and by the way, they're absolutely massive. I don't know if this gives you any scale, but this is probably four feet, four feet high. Massive slabs, and they're in great shape. Here's a George Smith, departed this life in 1813. So all, a lot of these people, guys, are from the 1700s. <laughs> I just love this. Now we are going back. I mean, we're in Vermont, East Coast. And you, you've got a figure, let's see, December 23rd, 1848, 74 years old. This is, this is, some of these people you know, 7076, Independence Day. Some of these people were being born around then. Or maybe they were older. Who knows? Look at these stones. Wow. Yeah, the condition, as some of you know, is called taphophobia. I am one of those. I'm sure many of you are. The fear of being buried alive. So, in obedience with, with, with his wishes, the kids and the mother, I, I don't remember when the mother died, but the kids were in charge and they actually delayed his burial by three weeks just to make sure dad was dead. And then after that, and I think Dr. Smith had some of this prepared, or at least in his instructions, because he died suddenly and maybe in those three weeks is when they prepared this elaborate grave that we're going to see. 
which is just ahead. Some beautiful stones here. This is so out of the way, but it is it is worth it is worth the drive. Cornelius Abernethy. He died in 1877, 48 years old. Yeah, I'm just giving you a look at some of these stones. There are a lot. So there is his tomb right up there. And it's like you can see a mound. And right at the top of that mound you see that concrete square. And that is the window that looks down upon his face. Now he's down there and they said that he's got a hammer in his hand so he can he could bang if he woke up to alert people up here. I'm not sure how he, what he would bang on and if someone would hear him, but if that wasn't enough, he had the bell. I don't think that's there anymore, but he had the string connected to his hand or his foot, I don't know, but he could uh, ring the bell. And there is that window that we're going to see. And that window goes down, I think, six feet to his face. And I initially thought it was more that he could see the light of day or the stars at night. But as I was doing some research, oh, look, at, yeah, I just have to walk over here. Look at this. These are incredible stones. That it was really more for them, for people to look down to see if he, his eyes were closed. Now the window, unfortunately, over the years has condensation in it. We're going to be taking a look. I brought my I brought my mega flashlight, 9,000 lumen. You know what we're going to do. You know what's coming. And I'm going to set the focus on six feet manually because his face is supposed to be six feet down. I'm going to stick the camera right on the glass after I dry it off. I brought some towels. And we are going to... I won't be able to see, but in editing, who knows what we'll be able to see. And if we don't see anything, that's okay. That's okay, too. All right, we're almost there, but... You know, while we're here, we've got to check out some of these stones. I mean, this is... This is just remarkable. According to the cemetery records, Catherine is buried there too in a connected or separate chamber down there. She does not get the window. She did not get the window. Her crypt is accessed only by a set of covered stairs leading down, which I would imagine connects to 
Dr. Timothy, remember the EA Fisher? Remember that walk I did at Rose Hill? I'll try to put the link in for that. That was a similar kind of thing, I believe, but the stairs you could, they were mostly filled in, but not all the way. It's too bad. But you know why they do that? It's kind of like the, the little girl who had the glass window that was in Natchez. Uh, Natchez City, I forget her name, but it's because of vandals. It's because of the vandals. We got the vandals, so they kind of ruin everything, so that's why they, they filled it in. John Wilson, Lois, wife of John Wilson. It looks like it says Dr. Own? Drowned. Oh, wow. Drowned July 26, 1830. She was 40 years old. She drowned. Ancestry, Deb. Either in editing or after. We'll have to see if we can find a, a picture of Lois. Never know. Look at these stones. Okay, let's... We're getting very close. I know I'm teasing you guys, but... Oh, look at the size of these. I'm telling you, this is, this is five feet high. Okay, let's do this. Here it is. Okay. So it's a rectangular mound, a, kind of a tumulus. Who knows under there? There's probably some type of tile arch ceiling structure which the way that all works is, you see how it's rounded? If it's hollow in there, structurally, I'm an architect, uh, tile arch system or other type of old systems where you use tapered blocks in an arch type form, it's the compression of all the pieces coming horizontally. And as it settles down, it's pushing out that holds that together. And there it is, guys, the famous, it is famous, the famous window. Now here is another one, a bigger one. Now in this case, I'm going to take a guess, this might have been, this is either was the stairwell, but eh, maybe not. This may be where Catherine is. But I'll tell you what, you can, it's caulked, but you can see if you had some equipment, you could lift this up. I'm sure her coffin is right down there. All right, let's take a look without further ado. Looks like he's gotten some visitors. We've got some, I can see through the window. I can see partially down. Very interesting. All right, so let's first. I move the money aside. Let's let's get the best we can. You know what? I can see in there. This could work. I doubt it's going to work, but looks like there's two uh, layers of glass, or one very thick layer of glass here. With caulking, I'm going to turn the gimbal off. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, I've got that fairly dry. Is I'm going to go to manual focus. And I'm going to put put this on something that's six feet away, which this would be a good target. And then once I get it focused, because this is about the distance down to his face. And I think it's already, what I'm gonna do is zoom in. Okay, guys. That's, that's gonna be as good as we're gonna get. I'm gonna turn the gimbal off, and here we go. Here we go, guys. Not sure. Hold on. 
gotta get this thing. There we go. Okay, I've got it right in the center. And it looks like I'm kind of in between some drops. And I'll play with the focus. But here goes the light. Here goes the light. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not meant to see his face, but who knows, guys. I'll play with the focus here. Yeah, I better leave it. What I'll do is I'll move the camera around a little bit to a different position. Yeah. Boy, if we could just get a rag, just one swipe underneath there, you could, you could definitely, you could definitely see down. Can we see? I don't know if I see a face or not, but anyway, that is our best shot at it. All right. All right, let's turn the gimbal back on. Wow, pretty cool. I was able to see down the hole. We'll see in editing what we got. But that was, uh, that was pretty cool, guys. All right, so we are gonna continue. I'm gonna continue on my trip here. I'm gonna get south and we're gonna see some more graves. I'm here for two days and I gotta bug out. So, all right gang, we'll see you soon on the next one. Be safe.